hello, hello, hello. If you clicked on this video, this means you're probably stressed out about writing your PIQ essays for the UC system. But you're in luck because you see, just last year, I had to go through that whole process. And hopefully, by documenting, reading my PIQ essays, it will help you throughout your process. Without further ado, let's get started. I just wanted to first start off by saying that I applied to three UC schools, UCI, UCSD, and UCLA under business administration or business economics. For those three schools, I got accepted into UCI and UCSD, but waitlisted at UCLA. I took 11 APs, took mainly honors classes, and I ended school with a 3.9 GPA unweighted, a 4.6 GPA weighted, and I was the top 20 out of about almost 800 students in my class level. Right now I'm focusing more on my essays. And what I want to start off is by placing this in front of your screen. As you can see in that doc, I highlighted all these eight UC prompts in three different colors. And I wanted to do that because I wanted to show you guys that all these prompts can be divided into three categories. So when choosing the essays that you want to do, hopefully you want to show that you're well-rounded. So I suggest choosing one from each category and choosing two from the category that has four prompts in it. So let's get started on reading my essays. Now the first color that I would like to talk about is the red one that I highlighted. It's about your achievements, what you've accomplished in life, and what you're proud of doing. So with that, I chose prompt number three, and I used it to demonstrate my skill or talent. But more specifically, I want you to think of these prompts as prompts that show your growth. With prompt number three. What would you say is your most incredible talent or skill? How have you developed and demonstrate the talent over time? For me, communication is a compelling weapon to behold. Held by the wrong person, words are rendered useless. But I am a skillful swordsman. When I wield my words with literary technique, I perfect my skill to become the master of communication. However, the master was once a student. When joining my school's speech and debate team in 10th grade, the shy and younger me found it fascinating to research a topic in depth and memorize a 10 minute speech. The weekly meetups with my coach brought much anticipation for my first ever speech competition. In the years that followed, I consistently worked on improving my posture, voice, and persuasive capabilities by thoroughly analyzing my own mistakes after a competition. I would compete in different categories to continuously challenge myself. Eventually, competing in speech became effortless, and so I joined Congressional Debate Team. The fast pace of congressional debate taught me to use my perfected skills and hone them differently. I found that I still had much to improve on, yet in order to refine my skill, I should always be in a state that allows for personal growth. The ability to vocalize my passions through public speaking magnified my love for communication tenfold. But public speaking is only one of the forms of communication. Performing in front of a general audience is drastically different compared to social interaction. Being treasurer of the speech and debate team allowed me to conduct business with professionals. As the current speech vice president, I help lead the team's skills workshops and advise teammates on how to improve by editing and interpreting their speeches. Leadership has allowed my social skills to thrive as I help bridge the gap between the student and the teacher. I became both a friend and a mentor. I've mastered communicating with my teammates during competitions and have found ways to utilize my talent in order to help students polish their own words so that they too can one day become a master of communication. I'll let that sink in. I just wanted to point out a few things here. Do you notice how in the beginning the hook is so important? I hooked you in like that. 
and I tied in my hook to the very end about becoming the master of communication. And I just wanted to point out through my essays, there's a common theme for that. There's always the hook. There's always a part where there's a however, a but, that leads to my end goal. And throughout all my essays, I've noticed a common theme that I did throughout all of them. What have I done to improve myself and help myself? What have I done to help others? And what have I done to help the world? And you always want to focus on that. How am I able to show that I've improved and how I've made an influence in the world? Hopefully that helped you. The next essay that I did was prompt number four. And this is, describe how you've taken advantage of a significant educational opportunity or work to overcome an educational barrier that you faced. You could choose one or the other, but I just wanted to show you how in this instance, I tweaked it a bit. I combined both together so that it shows an ending goal, that I have a bigger purpose. I also want to show that this essay prompt is more about what risk did you take and what reward did you reap after that. But first off, I just want to share with you the hook of this. Notice how I'm creating personification throughout the whole thing. I took one word and one theme and I spun it throughout the whole essay. You're going to see that my hook, it sets the stage to my end goal, my bigger purpose. The red curtains muffled the sound that draws me onto the stage, yet my heart pounds vigorously to the red flag signaling me not to walk out. I am not prepared. I will never be good enough to do this. Red flags. But my white flag raises up and surrenders as I find myself stepping into the spotlight and next to the large TEDx Santiago sign. Confined to a small red circle, I project my voice loud and clear to initiate the conversation. Hey, how are you? Fake. The words glowered on the projector screen to illuminate how much of a fraud I am. My TEDx speech focuses on the importance of authenticity in a superficial society, yet I'm the one who's being disingenuous. The crowd sits in awe of my outstanding performance yet they would be surprised by just how simple it was to get on that stage. The truth was, giving a TED talk was an opportunity open to anyone at my school. However, I was one of the nine students who seized the opportunity. I spent months writing numerous rough drafts and meeting with the teachers. I memorized every word, intonation, and hand gesture because I knew the impact of this moment. Everything I did on that stage would reach further than the four walls of my school's auditorium. The 4,000 students I could have shared my speech with expanded to the possibility of 8 billion. I had a global platform within my grasp that I utilized to help anyone who has ever felt alone. I shared all my struggles as a lost high school student trying to fit in and displayed vulnerability to the world. Yet my hardships were not in vain. Because from that one speech, I've had friends relating to a sense of imposter syndrome in their personal relationships. By performing, I witness the audience's raw emotions as they contemplate their actions at that moment. And by getting on that stage, I've made genuine connections with hundreds of strangers I will never meet, yet I know I have impacted. Once again, you see that whole common theme of what have I done for myself? for others, and for the whole world. You'll notice throughout both of the essays, to essay three and essay four, there was always a turning point, a moment where I had a sense of growth, where I took a risk. I would use words like, however, but, yet, to change it and switch it into how I did this and what makes me unique and special. Okay, so the next 
essay that I chose to do was on prompt number six. This is the blue highlighted one in which it's about your inner self, what defines you and makes you the person that you are. And what I noticed with this and sometimes with several other essays is that I think they follow a certain theme. It's basically topics that admissions officers have heard over and over again and are kind of tired of. I know, I know. How can they be tired of it when it makes up a huge part of ourselves? For example, the two essays about the death of my grandfather, as well as the whole idea of being first generation Asian American. And it's topics that these admissions officers, they've heard over and over again. But I just want to show you how I made it different. Or these are stories that we choose that are quite similar to each other. But now it's the point of how do I make it different? How do I show people that, hey, my story might be similar to a lot of other people, but I did this instead. This is what makes me unique. Topic six. Think about an academic subject that inspires you. Describe how you furthered this interest inside or outside the classroom. I just want to say, when you write this essay, think about how does this relate to your major? This is the perfect one where you could show, hey, I really want to do this major, business economics, business admin, at your school. I was born in 1932, or was it 1933? I have no birth certificate, but I still remember the sound of bombs and bullets plaguing my childhood. These were the first words written in my grandfather's autobiography. However, since it was written in Vietnamese, the language barrier prevented his story from being shared with our entire family after he passed away. As I read my grandfather's autobiography during the summer before my senior year, I wanted to break that language barrier. I spent weeks translating his story from Vietnamese to English because I believe in the importance of preserving stories. I found myself referring to classes like AP World and U.S. History, which gave me contacts on the Vietnam War. This knowledge obtained from reading textbook pages about the Cold War or that offensive enabled me to understand my grandfather's narrative and experiences on a global scale. By reading his autobiography, I recognized on a deeper level my family's struggles after the war and the repercussions of the Vietnamese diaspora. Through translating, I learned parts of history that textbook pages could never unearth and enabled future generations of my family to remember and preserve our ancestry. I wanted the world to know my grandfather's story. So through the speech and debate team, I reinterpreted my grandfather's words into a speech that my classmates and competitors could understand. Through poetry and prose, I'm able to uphold my grandfather's legacy. Today, I have found ways to incorporate history into my everyday life. I am able to speculate the outcomes of political elections just by understanding how the government system worked in the past. I have correlated speeches about the present-day gender wage gap to the U.S. women's liberation movement in the 1960s and to the hashtag MeToo movement. I read the autobiographies of Malcolm X and of people during Fidel Castro's rule and can pinpoint them to other parts of history. It is the reason why although the events of the past stay the same, my love for history changes as I grow to understand more of the story. In this case, I showcased something that was really personal to me. I took the death of my grandfather, but I didn't focus solely on it. I focused on what's important to me, but also how this relates in the whole world. How, is, how would this be important in the whole world? I connected my own experiences, my own struggles, my story to the world. I showed myself in the bigger scale. I showed awareness. I showed why I love this subject through my writing, through my passions, through how I'm able to evolve through my grandfather's death but then also through loving a subject called history. And I want you guys to think of that, how I took a problem, how I took a common theme, but I somehow found a way to make it my own. 
my final essay, which is prompt number seven. This one is the yellow highlight about your engagement with people, things, and ideas around you, the impact of the outside world, and how you handle the impact. So prompt number seven is basically, what have you done to make your school or community a better place? Both of my parents are Vietnamese. By default, I am first generation Asian American, and I was ashamed to being different. Starting from ninth grade, I was treasurer of the club Vietnamese Student Association, VSA. Together, alongside Bollywood and Black Student Union, we truly represented all the diversity that could be found on the school campus. Go Sharks! Being one of the dance coordinators for VSA, I sought to fix this issue as I helped create VSA's cultural dance for the first multicultural assembly hosted by my school in over a decade. I remember our Ao Yai's gracefully flying in the wind alongside our conical hats and red ribbons. The applause that erupted afterwards was euphoric and unbeknownst to me would spark a movement. During my time as treasurer, I created fundraisers introducing Asian snacks and boba to the white majority campus. I discussed the rising hatred against Asian Americans during COVID-19 pandemic through the first ever equity panel hosted by my school. As president of VSA in 11th grade, I started the first ever cultural conversations. I contacted cultural clubs and led meetings to help bridge gaps. Everything I have done is to help others understand what makes diversity so special. I led club meetings that taught members to embrace our food and celebrations alongside with remembering the Vietnamese immigrant struggle. My perseverance to have Vietnamese representation on campus was greatly noticed by my peers. I advised cultural clubs that formed after VSA, the Multicultural Baking Club, the Arabic and Filipino Student Associations were some of many. I personally guided clubs from the ground up on how to make a club that would leave a legacy. VSA is a household name and a beacon of diversity that I never had growing up. I have found ways to preserve my own cultural identity by helping others embrace their own. Is the exact reason why representation matters because I have created a place of refuge in a climate of cultural differences. It is why I proudly embrace my identity as first generation Asian American. We've heard that story over and over again, but do you see how I made it different? I showed what I've done as Asian American and how I've used something that I could not control being grown into. And I use my identity to add to my school or community. I made a difference there and it shows in my writing. Throughout all my essays that you're reading, and I'm saying this for all of them, I have found ways to show a purpose. And I think that's what shines in it. That's what makes these essays so strong. I think it's because you're able to show your personality and show your true, genuine self what you want to accomplish in life. If you're able to translate that from your own intentions into words, then it has the potential of becoming a strong essay, a beautifully crafted essay. I want to point out a few things that I've done throughout all of my essays. A few of them include, in all my essays, I always have those heavy hitter sentences that I have towards the end of a paragraph. And that's what you want to focus on. What can I write, for example? I have found ways to preserve my own cultural identity by helping others embrace their own. I create a place of refuge in a climate of cultural differences. The way you write and carefully craft your essay is important. You want to show that you are articulate but you also want to create that moment where the mission officers can be, wow, this is, wow. I also want to point out that I used words, I didn't use generic words in my essays. Whenever you're writing in your essay, you want to show that I did this. It is me who solely did this. So I conducted business with professionals. I led team workshops. I advised 
teammates. I initiated a conversation. I led, I contacted, I advised, I personally guided from the ground up. I did all of these things. Of course, it's great to acknowledge everyone else who helps you, but these focus on what you've done. So you want to show, hey, I did this. I'm proud of it. I did it. So yeah, those were the four essays that got me in to two of the three schools I applied to. I hope that if you made it this far, you enjoyed the video and you found it useful. And I wish you only the best. And if you like this video, you should like it. You should subscribe. You should watch my next few videos. You should watch my TEDx video, which I'll link down below in the description. And if you need any help, just leave a comment down in the comment section. I'll be, I'll try, I'll try to respond back. But I wish you all the best, whatever the future holds. Good luck. Bye. Didn't end yet, so goodbye.